Hello everyone, welcome back to Sermon CT Prep. Today we're tackling Synthetic Division, which is chapter 16 of the College Panda Math Book. So let's get started with question 1. The expression 4x over x minus 2 is equal to which of the following? So to do Synthetic Division, we know it's x minus 2 over 4x. And we know that if we put 4 here, we'll get 4x minus 8. And we get the remainder of 8. Thus, we can rewrite this as 4 plus 8 over x minus 2. So the answer should be C. If the expression 6x squared plus 5x plus 2 over 2x plus 1 is written in the form 1 over 2x plus 1 plus q, what is q in terms of x? Again, what we can do is doing, uh, we can do synthetic division. And we know that it must be 3x to cancel out the 6x squared from the from this uh, function. So we get 6x squared plus 3x. And since we're subtracting them, we get 2x plus 2 left. And we know that if we add 1 here, we're going to get 2x plus 1, 1. So thus, we can rewrite this as 3x plus 1 plus 1 over 2x plus 1. So the answer is B. The, two ex the expressions for x squared plus 5 can be written as a 2x minus 1 plus r, where a is an expression in terms of x and r, is a constant. What is the value of r? So we can write again 2x minus 1 and 4x squared plus 5 here. And we get 2x here, 4x squared minus 2x, and then we get 2x plus 5. We add 1 here, we got 2x minus 1, and we get the remainder of 6. So we know that this equation is equal to 2x plus 1, 2x minus 1, plus 6, and here r must be 6. The function of g is defined by a polynomial. The table above shows some values of x and gx. What is the remainder when gx is divided by x plus 3? So we can use the remainder theorem and the remainder when gx is divided by x plus 3 should be equal to g negative 3, which in this case is 2. So the answer should be c. In the polynomial above, k is a constant. If z minus 1 is a factor of the polynomial above, what is the value of k? So we know that z1, z minus 1 is a factor only if the polynomial will be equal to 0 when z is equal to 1, right? Because this is the remainder theorem. So we can uh, input z as 1 to all of these equations and set the polynomial equal to 0. Uh, equal to 0. And in this case, we can simplify this to get 2 minus kx plus 5x plus 2x minus 2 is equal to 0. Thus, negative kx plus 7x, because the 2's cancel out. And here we can see that k is equal to 7, so the answer is 7. When 3x squared minus 8x minus 4 is divided by 3x minus 2, the result can be expressed as a minus 8 over 3x minus 2. What is a in terms of x? Again, we can do synthetic division here. 3x minus 2, 3x squared minus 8x plus 4. We put x here, so we get 3x squared minus 2x, which will lead us with negative 6x plus 4. Oh, this is minus 4. So should we write this as minus 4? And now we subtract 2 here to get negative 6x plus 4, and the result is negative 8. Thus, we can rewrite this as x minus 2, negative 8 over 3x minus 2. So a must be x minus 2, so it's b. The expression can be written as ax plus 1 plus b, where b is a constant. And what is a in terms of x? Again. Every, like every question, we have to do synthetic division. x plus 1 divided by 2x squared minus 4x minus 3. So we put 2x here, we get 2x squared plus 2x. 
negative 6x minus 3 and here we can subtract by 6 to get negative 6x minus 6 and we get the remainder of 3. So we can rewrite this as 2x minus 6x plus 1 plus 3. So the answer here should be D because it's 2x minus 6. This expression can be written as ax plus b, x minus 2 plus c, where a and b and c are constants. What is the value of a plus b plus c? So again, nothing too hard. We can just use synthetic division first. And by doing so, we can get x here. We get x squared minus 2x here. Subtract them, we get 6x minus 9. We add 6 here, we get 6x minus 12, remain the 3. And we know that a must be equal to 1 because it's uh, x plus 6, x plus 2, x minus 2, x minus 2 plus 3. So A is equal to 1, B should be equal to 6, and C should be equal to 3. And if you add all of these together, we should get 10. So the answer is D. For polynomial px, p2 is equal to 0, which of the following must be true about px. So what we can do here is we know that if you use the remain, remain the theorem, p2 is equal to 0, this means that x minus 2 is a factor of px, right? So the only actually answer that's correct here is to be c. If px is x cubed plus x squared minus 5x plus 3, then px is divisible by which of the following? So again, we can do uh, using the Reinder theorem to test each of the answer choices for a range of zero. So let's do P2, which is two cubed plus two squared minus five, two plus three. That's eight, that's four, that's negative 10 plus three, that is equal to five. And let's do P1, and we'll get one cubed is one plus one minus five plus three. Here we get zero, okay. So you know what's that? So we know that it's divisible by uh, divisible by x minus one. Let's try plus three here. We will get negative three cubed, which is twenty seven, plus or minus negative three squared, negative five, negative three, plus three, and this should also give us zero. So the answer is two and three should work. So the answer is C. If the polynomial is divisible by x minus two, which of the following could be px? So if px, if px is divisible by x minus 2, then p2 must be equal to 0. And what we can do here is just basically test each of the answer choices. So let's just start with d here. p0, p2, 3 times 4 minus 2 times 4 minus 8. And in this case, we get 0. So the answer is d. Even if we don't start at D, we just have to keep on trying plugging in uh, when x is equal to zero to when x is equal to two to find the function that gives us zero. If x minus one, x plus one are both factors of the polynomial a x to the power of four plus b x cubed minus three x squared plus five x and a and b are constants, what is the value of a? So again, we can use the remainder theorem here, and we can set up a systems of equations. When the polynomial is divided by x minus 1 or x plus 1, the remainder is 0, which means that if you let px denote the polynomial, p1 is equal to 0, and p negative 1 equal to 0, then we can rewrite this equation in terms of it. So we get a1 cubed minus plus b1 cubed minus 3 1 squared plus 5, and this will give us 0. We can do the same for the negative one. And if we do so, we should also be getting zero. And now what we can do is just add all the equations together. So we get a plus b minus three plus five is equal to zero. And we have a minus b minus three minus five is equal to zero. So if you add both of them, we will get 2a minus 6 is equal to 0, and we will get a is equal to 3. So the answer is c. Moving on to the last question of today's video. For a polynomial px, let me erase this. p2 
p one third is equal to zero, which will be following must be a factor of p x. So again, we can use the remainder theorem. So we must know we know that three x minus one is a factor of p x, right? Because p of one over three is equal to zero. So the answer is a. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you guys are staying tuned for the next video.